Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blazon Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. Hello, this is... well, I'm not gonna bother repeating my name now, but um, welcome back to Blazon Nation. This is episode 13, recorded on... March 25th, 2014. I feel like getting a bumper for that just tiny bit right there after I say when it's all recorded and everything, but meh. Don't really need that, I guess. Um, we were going to have a guest tonight, um, the thing from the one previous episode, but, um, Watch me. I'm not sure what's going on with him, but hopefully something can be figured out soon. I don't know. But anyhow, before things get too serious, let's get into the swing of things all over again. Sidewalk talk. Talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. Alright, so, first off, I am trying out my new app called Custom Soundboard for Android. And, um, if you want to have some neat soundboard or whatever, you can, again, download it from the Google Play Store. It is free, and you just gotta get the audio files on your phone and connect them to each tile. It's a pretty cool app, and that is what I am using for the live version. Yeah, so you'll notice that um, in episode 12, there hadn't been an episode out since, I think, yeah, early January. And then it didn't get released till early March. And then this episode hasn't happened till today, which is about late March. And hopefully gets released before April Fool's Day. Unfortunately, I've had a lack of time for my podcasts, as I've been doing quite a bit of my YouTubing, as well as homework from school, because I'm, again, in my university courses, so it's a bit difficult to keep up with everything, from doing up my music to YouTubing and moderating chat rooms, watching The Shaft, and also catching up with Full Metal Alchemist and Breaking Bad and all sorts, just all sorts of stuff. So that's my excuse as to why there's been a lack of Blazon Nation. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it right after this stream or uh, after the show or later. But I'm hoping to bring out a sixth episode to the Cookie Conundrum sometime or another. Um, there has been an update to Cookie Clicker, which I would hopefully talk about in that other show, so I'll leave that out from this one. But, um, so lately I've been doing my new series called Blazy Log, which what Blazy Log is, they are, mine. it's my Minecraft vlogging series, so... Basically like a normal vlog, except for I talk a little bit about what's going on in front of me in Minecraft. And instead of having an actual face cam, um, I'm using Minecraft for that. Except for most of it's in first person, so... It, it's... it's close enough. <laughs> I'll give you that. And then there's been a bit of a lack of stuff going on with my server let's plays with k corbeard um he's been offline for a bit uh, but hopefully we can get some new episode episodes out soon so please do still look forward to that i guess i guess i could put it to that um i was hoping to get this picture of mine here 
that I drew myself in the middle frame. I was hoping to get that as an animated GIF or GIF. Basically where it's fading out and in and out. Uh, I might even just add that to the final product so that there's more point to the video version as opposed to, well, actually the other thing I've found about the video versions is that Audible, which they have an Audible podcast program, and I'll probably talk about this later, but their thing for podcasts is either you got to get enough um, viewers or listeners or whatever on either iTunes or YouTube, which for me it would have to be YouTube because I absolutely refuse to put any creative works of mine on iTunes at all. So, so yeah, and... Um, I've had to get new earphones only to find out that my phone, which is a Motorola XT910, just got it a few weeks ago. It's been doing terrifically. It legs at times, but it's still a very good phone. And, um, yeah, I got it from the Cellular Magician. If you need cell phone repairs or whatever, go for them. They are very good. Um, in any case, um, that's pretty much all I can get off the top of my head. Other than I hope you all had a great March break and I'm sorry for the lack of episodes out. So let's get the thing down on the run, I suppose. Crappy segue, eh? Oh. Whoops. That reminds me, I got a have the volume on. Side oh, no, one no. talk. talk. Bad idea. <laughs> Actually, on That's the side one. Walk. Actually, yeah. Before I continue, no. That's just a group on the Steam. Okay. My apologies for that. And. Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Oh. My bad. I will have to replace that with the actual bumper. So I'll definitely be doing some editing. Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. But in any case, so on the rundown, we have quite a few articles. We have EA gets a second year as the worst company in US history, which is an article, a video of, um, AIDS denialists filed DMCA's against me by Miles Power or in brackets Power M 1985. Do be warned though, the video is NSFW as there is language. Except for that's what Miles is being name called by the some um, jerks that are messing with his video. This next one is how Nervos Lobster lost his or her Google Glass and regained faith in humanity, which is on Slashdot. And then a link to a petition. Um, th this unfortunately had one, which is to for Mark Zuckerberg to ban gun sales on both Facebook and Instagram. And if you're wondering why Instagram is there, that's because, well, there'd be gun sales there too, but also because Facebook um, owns Instagram. This next article is about a teenaged big-mouthed girl who makes a Facebook post that costs $80. No, not eighty dollars. Eighty thousand dollars to her father. The next one is a little more of a pleasant subject, so I'll probably just get to that at the end, maybe. Um, a man who has, well, who takes his picture each day for twenty-five years, and you'll get to see him age and all that. So I'm not even sure I'll talk too much about that. 
but more so just link is to it because it, it is really cool. Um, the next one is the face or as it's been revealed in other articles that maybe this guy isn't the man behind Bitcoin but in this article from Newsweek his face is revealed and there's a bit of thunder on that one. There is the Newtown shooter's father, Adam Lanza, who wishes his son was never born. Now how about that for something harsh? The next one, and yes I had said there's a lot of articles this week, mostly because some of these are a bit old, so, but, but they're still relevant in my opinion. Then again, that's what this show is about, is opinion. And then, a class action suit was filed against Google over children's app purchases. And last, but not least, and probably will be talked about maybe before the man aging video, is the Oculus Rift support um, by Mojang. Yeah. The official support for Oculus Rift in Minecraft has been cancelled by Notch because of the following, well, of the next article, that Facebook has bought Oculus VR or Oculus Virtual Rea Reality, which is a company that made the Oculus Rift for $2 billion, and again, um, having official support for the Oculus Rift in Minecraft is not going to happen. Other than in an unofficial mod, but that's about it. So, without further ado, let's dig down into these suckers, eh? Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Alright, so with this first article, EA gets its second year. So, many people know EA now as pretty much a money... I, I was gonna go for loving, but more, more so money whoring company. In which, l lately they've... When it comes to DRM in their games... Yeah, it's it's bad. Sim City, great franchise, but when it came to the latest one, EA just had to crap load it with DRM, with online only play, and the first time it's released the on its launch, people can't play it. Because of the no, no, not only is the game online only, but you can't even get online. You, you can't get on the servers because it's so frigged up. Imagine that. And then Battlefield 4, which actually ended up facing lawsuits because of how glitchy the game ended up being. Well, basically just that, the game was glitchy. And even Battlefield 3, the problem with it was the multiplayer lacked because barely anyone played the multiplayer. And ba Battlefield is... Um, I'm not sure whether it, if, um, oddly enough, is the right thing to go for there. But, um... Battlefield 3... Yeah. The Battlefield franchise and Call of Duty, which Call of Duty is Activision slash Infinity Ward, and what was the other one? Treyarch. They have been in competition for pretty much ever since Call of Duty came out, which I, I, I can still remember the old days when Call of Duty was still teen rated. And then after number three, all of a sudden it's got the M sticker on it. So, I guess number one through three, if you're not 
17 and under, if you're just a teenager, you'd be legally allowed to play it. But, um, so according to consumerists, they have won. Not only, not only have they won two years in a row, not, not only have they won one year, they've won two years, not only have they won two years, but two years in a frickin' row. They won it for, I believe, 2013, was it? I, I think it was 2013 and 2012. Oh, and I, I should say the other thing with that is that um, on the forums, members, while well, users would say that um, they, they, they'd crap on SimCity, and next thing you know, they're banned just because they're crapping on the game. It's kind of, it's almost like a Wild Game Studio thing. You say crap about their game, or if you say crap about their game in videos, your video is gonna get claimed or just taken down because they don't need people crapping on their game, no matter how crappy it really is. But, pretty much for the past few years, EA has suffered a lot of PR. And, and with stuff like Titanfall, I am honestly amazed that it's actually doing so well. I'm not a hater. I just was hugely skeptic. And I'm sure a few other people were skeptic about it too, as they have been screwing up pretty much every other game. E even their latest one being Dungeon Keeper. By just crapping it up with... And I would prefer not to say crap so much, but... Pl plugging it up with so many um, in-app purchases. And just a whole bunch. Then again, I, I can't even say much other than I can't even play the game. I'm not sure what it is, but every time it loads, it just doesn't seem to want to load completely. And I'm even connected to the internet, and it doesn't do it right. So, I'm not sure what exactly is going on there, unless it's just another basically thing that EA sucks for. The next one is, again, the video about the AIDS Denialists movie, which I forget what exactly it was called now. Uh, and again, I just took the title from it. It was House of Numbers, which what... what what's going on here? So, Miles Power, he has made many videos regarding... Um, House of Numbers, which is basically saying that all of the stuff that experts come up with to prove anything about AIDS and the virus and everything is bogus. And for sure that is a controversial topic because people die from it. And not to mention, uh, I'm pretty sure it's one of the many STDs. That, or, or at least HIV is. I apologize if I, I am sounding a little ignorant there, but I have not taken sex ed in a while, let alone have I watched videos to do with sex ed in a while. Other than the AIDS stuff, but then again, anyone knows that uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's not just transmitted through intercourse. And I apologize to any younger ones listening to this, but it that that's how it runs. And if you are a young one, don't watch his video. It is very explicit. But again, that's because he is quoting what he's been insulted as. But, um... And to, just to comment on one of his videos, the guy he explains is basically just being a, um, I, I wouldn't go for typical, 
but basically, oh no, th this can be true. No, no, that's not true either. Th this is this, and this is this, even though, um, obviously, <laughs> that's incorrect, but the, the, they just don't have their facts is pretty much it. And, um, although this is old, a bit of an older video, it was uploaded 9th of February this year. But hopefully, hopefully, it has been resolved. So, good job, Miles Power, on exposing these people who um, are trying to get around a point that is not true. And really, all this stuff that's going for helping people with AIDS, um, if, if people believed that all this was fake, then th there's people not getting the help they need. Which is where it really gets bad. So... So that is that, not as um, big as the other one, but I also don't want to take too, too long with the show tonight, and I, I forgot to set my timer, but oh well. The next one up is how Neville Lobster lost his or her Google Glass and regained faith in humanity, which um, I forget exactly. I'll, I'll take a look at this again, if Google will load up faster. So, how the person lost their Google Glass, which is um, basically, uh, how do I put this? They are glasses that, well, re regular glasses shaped, and um, there's this tiny glass rectangular prism that will hang over your right eye and you just move your eye to look up at it and you'll see the Google Glass system stuff. And with that you can take pictures, videos, Google stuff through voice and all that. It's pretty neat other than the fact that people are going to see that annoying rectangular prism above your eye. And so, Nervous Lobster says the cab had already gone two blocks before I realized my Google Glass was no longer in my hand. And he got the driver to swing back around and he ended up retracing his steps along the snowy street to his apartment looking for his expensive device and uh, I I can't blame him with that he's because he says he had total panic because that that's what I feel when I've lost something I'm just thinking oh please God help me find this thing I I don't know how I lost it I wish I'd have kept better track of it but um and then the regaining faith in humanity, him, humanity comes in when someone returns the Google Glass to the person. And basically, all they care about is, um, basically just giving it back to her. I mean, giving it back to him or her. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, um,. Well, I, a while back, I had lost a $5 bill at my school. And then, next thing I know, one of the teachers found it for me. And if it was a student, I'd have a more open look on it. Because they, they aren't a teacher, so they're not going to lose their job or anything if they've stolen something or not returned something. But, um... It really made me happy to know that someone found it and was honest enough to return it to the office even though they were a teacher, so obviously they'd have to. Otherwise, <laughs> they, they'd be in trouble for it, so yeah. Well, may, maybe not so much. 
Unless someone did start asking me some questions or something. But it's definitely something relatable. All right, now next topic. Which one was it? So we have the gun sales on Facebook. I'll actually get to this next one and then talk about the gun sales one, because I I I have a bit of a big point on that. So with the teenaged big bounced girl. She had made a Facebook post, if I can get to the article, because I forget what exactly it said other than, hey, we get to go on this trip. So, wh what she says is, uh, Mama and Papa Snay won the case against Gulliver. She posted to her 1,200 Facebook friends. Gulliver is now officially paying for my vacation to Europe this summer. Suck it! And in just that post, there goes her dad's $80,000, which he got from winning an age discrimination lawsuit against his former employer. Now, my mother had suggested he could probably, um, counter, um, file a lawsuit against that, which if he can and can win it, then good for him, because well, whatever got through his daughter's mind. Uh, un unfortunately, nowadays, some people just think that, to, to get some input into this, with anyone on Facebook or even on Twitter, they gotta post, they gotta post anything about how they're feeling. And in that text box, it says, "How or what are you feeling?" Okay, I'm feeling terrible. My girlfriend hates me. My girlfriend broke up with me. Um, I'm just feeling terrible and alone. Um, like my status, I'm bored, or something, I I'm not sure what exactly it is other than people lacking being able to um, just relate to others in real life. And so they go on Facebook, like my status for a rate, which there you go, there's judging involved, which can involve hurt feelings. And, uh, or, or what, what drives me nuts is Facebook marriages. When people are asking for Facebook marriages, I, 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 I'm, I don't get the point to it. Because if if you want into that stuff so bad, you just date the girl or whoever you want to Facebook marry or whatever it is. Or if it's just some kind of friendly thing. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I'm missing out on here. Um, but j just some of the things people post on Facebook and they claim it's out of boredom, surely you can find a better thing to do than make statuses on Facebook about stuff that probably you or you and your parents only give a crap about. I'm sure it sounds harsh to some people, but it's the truth. Not everybody cares to... Um, be judgmental of people by numbers or to um, know basically just h how much you're crapping yourself about something or j just any of that. It, it, it's hard for me to explain to be quite honest but it's just pointless. But 
in, in terms of this stuff, I I I wonder if um, how how they're, and I know this gets a bit deep, but how are they raising their child? Are they, or or how is he, how is she, learning stuff from school that she, not only is well maybe not so much of nosy because probably her father told her about this. But that she's got to shout everything out to the world. And... I guess she's learned the lesson now that... Doing that's going to cost you p certain people... E even your own father a lot of money. Because that violates a confidentiality agreement. Even though in, in, in some cases... Confidentiality agreements should be broken. Not not this one, but uh, I'm sure you're probably gonna guess what I mean. I was gonna refrain from saying it, but heck with that. The NSA and Edward Snowden, because of that, the NSA just they're illegal, and I don't know why they exist. Well. Uh, other than for um, nonsensical reasons, uh, I'll put it this way: I'm not sure why they can't just be abolished. Because the, there's there, there's been suggestions. Darn you! Quit going on screensaver. Of um, why did I just go off topic? Oh, this is driving me nuts. But. Oh, well, I was getting off topic anyways. Well, if I can remember it again, I'll put that back into the edited version, but I'm not going to bother. All right, next one. We have the video of the guy who ages, which I'm going to save for probably, I guess, near the end. Next up, we have... Um, let's see, do, 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 do. the new town shooters fighters thing. Thingificking king. So, what, what happened here? And if you don't remember what happened with Sandy Hook, it is the Val incident of Adam Lanza invading an elementary school. And, um, I forget what gun it was he used, but not not even that that matters, even. But j just for the sake of saying it, uh, he went off and killed 20 children and 6 adults. All because he, 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 he had something going on in his mind. He was... For sure, mentally ill. Actually, no, no doubt was he mentally ill. And anywhere you read about this stuff, that there's gonna be stuff about it, unless it's maybe a gun control um, advocate set or whatever, because they just totally ignore what. Um, is actually inside the person's mind and just go for what's what what it is they're holding on to while they commit their heinous act and so what well, what's going on here is um, Peter Lanza who is Adam Lanza's father he has um, said that basically he, well, again, he wishes his son was never born because he, he uh, I'm not sh I think it was that he felt embarrassed that his son did such a thing and killed so many people. And, um, <laughs> the thing just got back to me. <laughs> Oh crap! 
Okay, I guess we'll still be doing the show without him. But, um... And basically, just because of the relationship... Um... The, the, the lack of a good father-son relationship there because of his, because of Adam Lanz's mental condition. Well, not, I'm, not, I'm not really condition is the right way to put it. But um, uh, apparently there's also stuff with that he had Asperger's, which if you don't know what that is, that is... Basically, it's a hindrance on um, social ability, and um, I know a couple people who have it, and um, one of the things with it is that um, they, well, when it comes to certain things like people picking on the person, they don't take it quite... Um, the greatest. Um, one of my friends, he'd be bugged by other kids and um, he'd be driven mad by it. And that, that that's one of the things with Asperger's is unlike someone who doesn't have Asperger's, they might not take it so seriously, but um, Asperger's people, um, Asperger's diagnosed, um, teenagers or whoever, um, when they have their buttons pushed, they, um, th their reaction is more over the top than what one might usually expect. And th that's what, um, apparently Adam did not admit to and apparently where they lived um, or live or whatever there is a lack of available of a avail <laughs> I can't speak dang it of availability for mental health facilities and that and just getting back to stuff with that that that's been one of the biggest problems in the U.S. is that they've been concentrating so much on getting gun control in there. Where's the funding and help for the mental health of these people? That's what's been causing these shootings to happen. Is they're not in the right mind. L last year, the one in Georgia, the um, teenager whose name is Brandon, his issue was he did not take his pills early that morning and he wanted to get some help from the police but because he did not take his pills, his medication that very morning, he, something that's wired in his brain had brought him to take it to the extreme and basically almost risk becoming a criminal, becoming a murderer, only to have, she's a bloody hero, Antoine Huff, I believe her name is, Mrs. Huff, uh, Ms. Huff, talk him out of it, and actually treat him like a human being. But the thing is with him, he didn't want to kill anyone, he just wanted to help. But as with Adam Lanza, all these years he had been planning on beating these other people who have had, who um, did school shootings like the Columbine people and playing so much Call of Duty. And all this time he had been planning on beating their records for killing the most kids in either a school or any public place. And he did. Because he had that motivation. Like they all say, if you have motivation, you... If you have 
how much motivation, you can do anything. And that's what happened with Adam Lanza. He got all this, these ideas of he's gonna get more points than these other kids. He, d he did the math on that connecting points you'd get from killing other players in Call of Duty to these other cases of school shootings and he planned on beating them and something I found with this article and I'm finally getting my um my own motivation back with this because I'm feeling a lot less tired now might even be because the thing told me that he's tired as heck. But, um, the, the thing that I've, or at least what I'm getting from this article, is that his father didn't really care much for to do anything about his son. Although my mom, my mother had suggested that it, it and I, I don't disagree. It is hard to deal with a kid who's got um, a certain mental tendency. or I, I'm, I'm trying to find a better word for it. I'm thinking mental, mental condition, mental disorder. I'll, I'll go with disorder. That, that sounds least offensive or whatever. But... Um, like, I, I, I had a cousin who had a pack full of mental disorders, and things were difficult for his parents and at school, and it really upset him because no one, and he, he's an 80, he was an 80s born child, and, um, he, at at the time that there was a la there was an absolute lack of an awareness for mental disorders and that that's one of the things I'm thankful for today I have Tourette's only it's very mild and I am lucky my mother feels lucky that I am that I was born when I was because what I get to go through today there's way more way more awareness for mental disorders. People know about Asperger's, people know about autism, Tourette's, um, ADHD, OCD, ADD, what have you. There's way more awareness than there ever was back then. Back then you'd have just been put off as weird, crazy, or heaven be the word. And I'm sure this will be uh, offensive to some people. But you'd be just considered and put off as retarded. And n nowadays it is an absolutely hurtful word. But that is what people were referred to back then. Well, I actually am not exactly sure even with that. But... That, that I'm sure is what you'd have been put off as because they did not have the education that we have now on mental disorders and I, I can't be thankful enough for that it's a great thing but th that's what, what I have to say on that case I'm I, I'm in the middle of, um, his father didn't want to take the time or wasn't sure how to take the time. He was scared or he was cowardly. What it, what exactly would be the right way to put it as, but to the next topic. We have this class action suit which was filed against Google over children um, purchasing within an Android game. So in-app purchases. And 
I don't think the I think this was actually denied, which is a good thing. But for some reason, parents think, or at least some of these parents think that they need to be picking on these other companies for stuff that they should be doing themselves. That that's where the very first um, blog post on Blaze Nation came from. Was these or the parents who thought that Nickelodeon should do their parenting for them. And that that's sort of like what this is. Why can't you just tell your children um, you can play this game, but any store or shop you see in there, you stay the heck away from. Because that's gonna, that's gonna cost us money, and hey, next thing everybody knows, we're gonna sue Google over what we should have been looking out for and telling our kids to stay off of. And... I, I, I honestly pretty much think that sums that up, is that J just for some reason nowadays so many people so actually I guess I can build on to this more is that for some reason someone else has got to take the blame for your own actions and you know what's in the rules you know what's in the rule book but no you have to but basically self entitlement is what it is all here is that basically you you screwed up and now someone else has got to pay for your mistakes and you're entitled to it from them but no that is not the way it works and uh, my mother showed me this video of um basically above a video about kids in the about how things were in the 60s 70s and 80s and how lucky you'd be if you were born in one of those um, decades and one of the things brought up were basically if you broke your arm you'd have to or just hurt yourself you'd have to suck it up you cannot file a lawsuit and one of the things being there was no internet back then which was a definite um, I suppose you could say file to that because well hey firewalls means things can't get past it otherwise they get burnt and that, that's kinda like what things were back then there was a firewall from being able to do these things to these other companies because there was no internet back then and yeah I, I'm f I, I wish I could build on that more but I I think I've actually summed it up right about there so without further ado Let's get to the next topic, which we're almost all the way through them. So let's get to the Watchman take picks. Okay, I'll, I'll use better grammar there. So this guy, um, I forget what his name now is or was. I will definitely find out through this link. And this is on Daily Mail. So, artist Carl Baden, um, since eight, 1987, at the age of 34, he had um, taken a picture of himself every day for 25 years and ended up having more than 9,500, or in other words, 9,500 photos of himself. And it, it's, it's really neat. And I admit... I wouldn't mind trying it out, but that would require a lot of um, time, remembering, any of those. 
But um, I, I highly recommend you check and anyone who's listening or watching this, that you check it out. It's really cool, and I think you'll like it. it it's, it's. I've just never seen age aging like that, and I'm not sure if it's ever been um, shown that way yet or what. But, to the next topic, because I barely had much to say on that other one. The face behind Bitcoin revealed. So, on Newsweek, um, I'll get her name pulled up here. Leah McGrath Goodman, aka a journalist who should probably be fired from her job for violating a man, or... Well, he he is a man, but whether it, whether he was the actual man, and um, so there's a lot of just a crap load of um controversy going around with Bitcoin because there's been thievery of it. There's been Mount Gox having to shut down due to bankruptcy, and then bankruptcy, and then, um, watch me. And then there's controversy after that, because there's rumors that they still have some money from their users left over in their own pockets. And, um, just to dispel the whole um, thing with that, because even my father said that basically it's a um, basically with how risky it is, and it's definitely not something you should put your whole life on. As with one of the, I think, one of the people who actually worked on Bitcoin or whatever had said that it's more just an experiment and until further in the future, it should only be counted as an experiment. But it's just like every other money. American currency has been counterfeited and stolen so many things. It's it's really just like any other currency there's been out there. There's always been people stealing, counterfeiting. Just a whole run of controversial crap going on with other currencies. And one of the big ones being the US currency because it's so easy to counterfeit because they, they, I'm not sure if they do update their currency much. I don't know really too much about it, other than it's still paper, still ink, and but basically they're the what well, one of the closest things for bills that could ever grow on trees, because they're just made out of paper, pretty much. Although with the new Canadian bills, they're polymer now. Problem is, they melt easily. Well, more easily. Well, they they just simply melt because polymer is a plastic, and um, then the problem with that is that they can get stuck together, which is the downer about those. But then it's. Uh, I think it's slightly a bit more difficult to counterfeit because it's a different material and a lot more high tech I suppose you could say as opposed to what we used to, what well it's still being used but the current the journey I think it was is what the theme was for it or whatever probably not though but um the paper ones with the um, n not nylon 
I I, th I think maybe it is nylon. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but s some non-paper material in it, and um, pretty much that's that. You know, you know, notice I've said a lot of that's that's, but I I've I haven't done this in quite a bit of time, so I'm just getting back into the swing of it. Although I'm not sure if the swing will keep in the swing of things. But the second to last topic is the petition to ban gun sales on Facebook and Instagram. Now, the, the thing that drives me most crazy is that it is run by one of the most lamest organizations which is also full of bull crap um, in the US and that is mom's demand action for gun sense in America and good lord I freaking hate that word gun sense I, I, on the bright side when I see gun sense I know it's something about gun control because for some reason they don't they they think kids should not have access to firearms, which first sure they shouldn't. Under, but th th there's an exception to that. Buddy entered your channel. And Buddy left your channel. Sound muted. Microphone I, muted. I apologize if you heard team speak, but anyhow, the exception to that is that the kid is actually educated, and I don't see a thing in any of their posters and th th this thing is run by Shannon Watts who runs the whole organization and they, they, they call the whole thing a social media gun show I, I, w I wonder what they'd do with a real life gun show what would they do um some stupid thing for that too I don't know and they they, they, cons they compare themselves to MADD Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That, that, that's another thing that drives me nuts, is that they compare themselves. There's a difference between the two organizations. Mothers Against Drunk Driving is to um, keep the drunk drivers off our roads. The people that they're going after the people. Moms demand action. They're not going after people. They're going after guns. And they think they're making children children safe. I sl I I swear when I, w I when I was about the age of 9 or so, I used a gun. But the thing is, I come from a family that owns a gun shop and Many people would, uh, I'm sure there are people that would come up with, well, you, you own a gun shop, so obviously you're going to be against gun control. But the thing is, my family owning a gun shop, that means I get more education on it. And I'm sure you could get as equal as it, much education without having your family own a gun shop, but that's where I have gotten so much of my education on guns from is my family and to just put it down as you shouldn't have kids be allowed to use guns just plain and simple as that well what about actually teaching them how to properly use a gun. If the, the, if they're not taught that, what all... And the, the, there's there's these um, terrorist groups or who else who'd give kids guns. E even in foreign countries, they're giving um, teens guns to use to kill. And... Um, whether they're educated or not, I'm not exactly sure. But then again, that stuff is intended. That they're 
the intent is to murder because of money and drugs, basically. And... Well, what what else was there here? The thing with criminal. Oh yeah. What well, what the the other point I wanted to get out was that they're coming up with that. Hey, some kid on Facebook could get access to a firearm just by replying to a post on Facebook. Um. That that goes back to the topic of parents need to be looking out for what their children are doing online. Uh, honestly, I'd prefer not have my parents look at what all I'm doing online. But laying in a, again my excuses, I'm properly educated on it all. So. Yeah. Basically that that that's just another just little speck that goes towards that Facebook should do all this extra stuff. Just because parents can't make sure that their children aren't getting into inappropriate things or um trying to get stuff that they shouldn't be without parents' consent, and that, that, that's what parents are for, is making sure that their children don't go against the rules. And to have a company like Facebook do that, the, Facebook's job is not to parent. Their job is to maintain the site Make sure people are following the rules of the site, not for whatever parents should be doing. And it, it, it just really ticks me off. And the worst part is it actually got through, other than apparently it's being restricted to people under 18 years old. <laughs> so uh, honestly, I, I'm honestly thinking, you know what? Now I can toy it even more for when I'm 18 years old, because then I can buy guns from Facebook. Not that I would, because my family owns a gun business, so I just go through ourselves to get a gun. But simple thing here is that. What is the point of banning all these sales, of, of steering children away from, of disallowing them to use guns at all if you're not going to bother teaching them about how to properly use a firearm? Obviously, if they don't know how to properly use a firearm, they're going to use it wrong. They're going to shoot their foot off. They're going to shoot in the wrong direction, basically. And that's kind of like the path of life. If you're not taught right, if you're not directed right, you're going to go the wrong way. And that goes the same with learning how to use a gun. If you're not taught properly with that stuff, or even a bow and arrow, what have you, then obviously you're not going to use it the right way, because you're not taught right from wrong. That's the whole point to right from wrong, is so that you don't screw up, you don't hurt anybody, you don't even hurt yourself, and that everything goes fine. But they, they just seem to ignore that completely and ju just shame on them shame on them but finally we're on to the last two articles which I'm actually putting together which is a huge huge mistake it just happened 
Well, maybe not really just happened today. Maybe it, yeah, I think it did just happen today. But with that Oculus Rift, while Oculus VR or Oculus Virtual Reality is now owned by Facebook and they were bought for two billion. And in effect, Notch has canceled plans for an official support on Minecraft. You, you can still get the uh, mod thing to use the Oculus Rift, but that that Facebook. I'll just cut to the chase here. Facebook is a social network. They have games on Facebook, but those are not... F for a gamer standard, Facebook does not meet that requirement whatsoever. A game requires a lot of processing power. It does not... A browser is not enough for a gamer's game. I'll put it that way. And that's what the Oculus Rift was intended for. It was intended to be gaming technology and they're being sold to a company that has not a freaking thing to do with that industry. This, this just absolutely makes no sense. And sure there's a lot of money there. Maybe they were running low Maybe they needed funds, but they're two different companies. And this whole time I've been, I, 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 I'm thinking, you know what, I wouldn't mind getting myself an Oculus Rift. It looks friggin' cool. But now? Heck no. Sooner or later, like, there's plans on getting it for, um, being able to being in interactive classrooms or whatever, which that stuff it, it's it would be interesting to see how it goes. I admit to that, but the purpose, the sole purpose, is gaming, is enhancing the gaming experience, and just on that note, even screw the idea of having better interactivity with stuff you should be walking yourself off to school for. Unless you're disabled, which I'm pretty sure that's the people it's intended for. And in that case, that, that there's, I'm pretty sure there'd be an, a more um, intended technology for that purpose. Oculus Rift was built for gaming, that's what the Kickstarter was for, was for enhancing a gamer's experience, and that totally takes away from that purpose. It is basically saying that um, y you gave us money so that we could make something to enhance your gaming experience, and now that we're being bought by this big company, and I still like Facebook. It's helped me connect with my friends and all. But it almost, in a way, makes me want to quit. It's such an awful marketing choice. It really is. And it it's absolutely shameful. The companies are nothing alike. It destroys... It, it's... I'm sure someone's gonna say that it probably won't, but I'm not having any more faith in it at all. Unless Oculus VR, if you are listening to this, unless you separate yourself from Facebook as soon as you can, at whatever possible, if you do that, I might just regain faith in you. But to be bought by Facebook, that is going to totally destroy the purpose of Oculus Rift. That ruins it. That ruins it completely. And I feel sorry for every single one of those Oculus Rifters that... And there's going to be stuff with having 
added in some OS into Oculus Rift for Facebook and a whole bunch, and that? Are you kidding me? That makes it garbage. That is the... That, that's an EA move. That is rendering something to absolute crap. And that just peeves me off. When I saw this article on the Dead Workers Party website, I'm just thinking, you gotta be frigging kidding me. This makes absolutely no sense over and over and over. I, I'm not sure how many times I gotta say that. It, it It's just not gonna work in my eyes. It, it just isn't. But that's my thoughts on it. I've seen on Twitter a couple or so people I know, including Bitburner, who runs Minecraft, are already ashamed of this. And totally agree with Notch. And that that's the thing that's gone on with Minecraft, too. Is now, Minecraft no longer has official support for it. For Oculus Rift. And I'm sure someone's going to go off and say... Notch, how could you? You could still keep it up, but when you're when you look at the stuff between Oculus and Facebook, you gotta agree with Notch. I agree with Notch. Bit agrees with Notch. I'm not saying you should too. You have your own choice in the matter. But there's definitely a reason why he doesn't want to have Minecraft. And, and the, the way he's seen it, which basically not mine is like his, is that he saw, he sees Oculus Rift as gaming technology, not social networking, not lifely purposes, gaming. Hands down, gaming. And now that is gone. Maybe not completely gone, but it's going to diminish because of this new acquisition. And also the part that Minecraft is a game. Although it's been used for many lifestyle things, and that's been one of the big helps of it to its hype. And fame and everything. But... It just ruins the purpose of it all. Not not Minecraft, though. There's still a huge purpose to Minecraft. Not to Oculus Rift. Not anymore, anyway. But, um, now that we're all through the topics here, I'm sorry if this was a little long for anyone, or a little boring, or any of that. But let's get to the shoutouts. So, actually, we only have one shout out and then a couple of things I'd like to make um I guess maybe personal please on maybe maybe not but um ffsplit.com you can check them out for lightweight live streaming software they as I've said before um the VLC media player of Xfire X Split I mean just not um just a little more aesthetically appealing and I looked at the thing the other day and the guy just goes by llama I believe just llama and um, the just a gaming blog people have come out with a new group pick rain which I think it's pickrain.com or something like that so check them out and last but not least, these last two things. Um, a bit ago, I started up a new project called Ender Radio. Um, this, I think, will soon be great for music lovers and Minecraft lovers, or Minecraft music lovers, in which this is a radio for Minecraft-themed music. Or in other words, all the Minecraft parodies and songs you see up on YouTube, I plan on getting on Ender Radio. And it's hosted by iRadio, 
big shout out to you guys. I thank you so much for your service. It's really helped me out. And I can't wait to upgrade to that playlist thing. Because hopefully, if that is what I'm thinking it is, which basically would make it like a regular radio, then that'll be really great. So you can check it out at bit.ly slash ender dash radio and yeah go check it out it's got about seven songs on it hopefully I can get this one by Bebop Box don't mind that night and it could be the possible eighth and then there is Amazon so if one day you think of going on Amazon and th this isn't really a sponsor but I was able to get an Amazon associate thing with them. And so if you go to bit.ly slash blazamon, which is B-L-A-Z-A-M-O-N, and you can buy whatever you like. I, I think it's probably every 15 bucks spent or something like that. Um, referral credits will go towards helping out these projects, including Blaze on Nation and possibly even the Cookie Conundrum. So if you decide you want to go on Amazon to buy stuff, feel free to use that link. Please do, it will definitely, hopefully help out. And as for Audible, um, the other day I had applied and it turns out, and I'm not necessarily asking for that many views or whatever on YouTube, but if you can get each episode of Blaze on Nation 500 views at least per episode, then I'll be able to get that set up for you so that you can get free audiobooks on the podcast. Well, on us, or me, or whatever, whatever have you. So, yeah. So, you'll be able to find the podcast on YouTube. There will be a link in the show notes, as always. Um, I think anyone who tuned in, well, anyone who's watching the video version or listening to the audio version... And I hope to get this out very, very, very soon, as soon as possible. And I'm not uh, too sure if I'll get to... Uh, I'm probably not going to get to the Koki Conundrum tonight. But I hope you all have a great week. I'll see anyone on the shaft Thursday night. And April Fool's Day for this upcoming one. And in any case, I thank y'all for putting up with me. And I'll see you all next time. And if I can get it loaded up here. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes, the flippinawesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes, and to sponsor a future episode. So like I said, thank you all, well, thank anyone who tunes in, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. But about it, be the dies.